combining uncertainties. Now there are two cases and the first thing we need to do in our problem is to decide which case does it fall into. Number one, if we are adding or subtracting, what we need to do is we need to add the absolute uncertainties. However, if we are multiplying or dividing, what we need to do is add the percentage uncertainties. Let's illustrate this with a little example over here. I have two masses, M1 and M2, and each of them has been measured with the same absolute uncertainty of 0.1 kilograms. Let's calculate the total uncertainty in M1 plus M2. Well, because we are adding, let's keep this color consistent, because we are adding quantities, what we need to do is add our absolute uncertainty. So M1 plus M2 is going to be 1 plus 2, which is just 3.0 kilograms, plus or minus 0.2 kilograms. Remember, we are always adding the uncertainties. We're never taking them away. So let's quickly do, let's say, M2 minus M1, which in this case is just going to be 2 minus 1 kilogram, which is just going to be 1.0 kilograms. And our total absolute uncertainty in this case will also be added. So that's going to be 0.2 kilograms. Okay, well, let's also calculate the percentage uncertainty in this case. Should we just focus on this case over here, the first one, the percentage uncertainty in M1 plus M2? Well, if that's the case, our percentage uncertainty, I'm just going to call this PU in this case, that's simply going to be um, plus or minus our absolute uncertainty. So let me just write down the formula, our absolute uncertainty divided by our measured value or our measurement, I'll just call it value in this case, multiplied by 100. So in this case, our percentage uncertainty will simply be 0.2 because this is our combined absolute uncertainty our value is 3 for m1 plus m2 and i'm just going to need to multiply that by 100 which gives us approximately 6.6 percent let me just add that this over here is the percentage certainty in m1 plus m2 for consistency okay folks so if we are adding or subtracting what we need to do is add the absolute uncertainties now let's have a look what happens when we are multiplying or dividing so let's think of an example in which we need to add the percentage uncertainties we're going to need to be using a formula which involves either multiplication or division so for instance let's imagine that we have a runner so this over here is our runner who is running the 100 meter sprint over here. Once again, this is not drawn up to scale. And let's say that we measure their distance S that they run to be 100 meters plus or minus, let's say 0 0.01 meter so this is the our absolute uncertainty in this measurement let's say that we've used a stop clock of, uh, of, of some sort and in our stop clock we've got a value of let's say 12.1 seconds and let's put a value of our absolute uncertainty in this case for the time to be 12.1 plus or minus 0.1 seconds. Now, what we need to do is find out the percentage uncertainty in the average speed of this runner. So, um, 
we're interested in the percentage uncertainty of the average speed. Now the average speed, I'm just going to call that V rather than V average, is just going to be S over T, which is 100 over 12.1, which is going to give us 8.26 meters per second. Now how certain are we of, um, of this value? This is what we're going to be finding out next. Now in this case, we can see that we are dividing quantities. So we are dividing quantities and what we need to do is add the percentage uncertainties. So the percentage uncertainty in the average speed, so I'm just gonna say over here percentage uncertainty in V, that is actually going to equal the percentage uncertainty in, in S, which is the distance traveled, plus our percentage uncertainty in the time. Okay, well, let's write these down. Let's start off with the percentage uncertainty in the distance. We can see that our absolute uncertainty in the distance over here is 0 0.01. So, percent, so it'd be plus or minus uh, no point. Should we just write the plus or minus right at the end actually. So it's going to be 0 0.01 over 100 because this is our value. And then we also need to times it by 100 plus our percentage uncertainty in the time. Our absolute uncertainty in, in time is 0 0.1. Our value in the time is 12.1 and we also need to times this by 100. Now I know that in order to save time you can just factorize the 100 out however I just wanted to uh, make it absolutely clear what formula I'm using to get from this step to this step. Just to be absolutely clear, I'm just using that the individual percentage uncertainty is plus or minus your absolute uncertainty, which I'm just calling AU in this case, divided by our value multiplied by 100. Okay, well, if we were to put this into a scientific calculator, we're going to get that the percentage uncertainty in the average speed is 0.5. 84%. So this is a reasonably small value for the percentage uncertainty. An exam question may also ask you, well, we've got the percentage uncertainty in, in this case. Um, can you calculate both the percentage uncertainty and the absolute uncertainty? Well, to find the absolute uncertainty, all we need to do is find that percentage from the actual value of the speed. So in other words, how many meters per second is 0.84% out of 8.26? So let's just quickly calculate that. So our absolute, oh, I'm still using my galaxy pen. Let's switch back to yellow. So our absolute uncertainty in this case, I'm just going to call it a U is um, going to be 84% times um, 8.26. So this is just equal to 84 divided by 100 times, so let's just write it down. Um, so, sorry, not 0 0.84, not 0.84 divided by 100 times 8.26. And that is going to equal 0 0.069 meters a second. We can see this is actually a very, very accurate experiment.
just one more rule that I would like to go over today with you guys and this is if we raise the quantity to a power. So I'm just going to write the rule over here on a little blank piece of blackboard. The rule is that if I wanted to calculate the percentage uncertainty and let's say I have some quantity x, could be current, could be distance, could be could be anything, let's say raised to the power of n, this is actually equal to n times the percentage uncertainty in x by itself. So in other words, what we're doing is we are bringing that power just in front of the original percentage uncertainty. Let's illustrate this with an example. So let's say that uh, we have a nanometer uh, connected into some sort of a circuit and we have calculated the current I to be let's say 1 amp or 1.0 amps plus or minus let's say 0.1 amps. Now in this case if we wanted to let's say that we wanted to find the percentage uncertainty in I squared. Okay well if that's the case what we first need to do is we need to find the percentage uncertainty in, in I and then all we need to do is multiply it by 2 is equal to 2 times the percentage uncertainty of, let's say, of i, I'll just give it a subscript in this case, which is going to equal twice times uh, percentage certainty is absolute uncertainty divided by value times 100, our absolute uncertainty is 0 0.1 divided by value, which is 1.0 times 100. And uh, let's not forget this plus or minus sign over here. So our percentage uncertainty in I squared is going to be twice that amount. Now the percentage uncertainty in I will, uh, so this part of the equation that's going to be 10% exactly. So uh, the percentage uncertainty in I squared is going to be twice that amount, which is 20%. So our percentage certainty in I squared is considerably higher. It's twice as high because we've squared this value. Okay folks, uh, there's quite a lot of information in this video but by far the best way to tackle uncertainties is to do as many problems and as many examples as we can. Join me for my next video. I'm just going to put the, this link over here. And uh, in my next video, I'm going to go through some real past paper examples of uncertainties. Hope you enjoyed this. If, you, if there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below.